All right, for section 1.3, we're going to be looking at measuring segments and what all that entails as we go through here. And we're going to begin with some postulates here. And I'm already seeing I'm beginning with a typo. So let's take a look at this. Postulate 1.5 is called the ruler postulate. And it states every point on a line can be paired with a real number. This makes a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points on line and the real numbers. The real number that corresponds to a point is called the coordinate of that point. And you've used coordinate before when talking about graphing in algebra. So here's another use for that. So if we have a number line, as you see below here, what we can do is with our postulate 1, 5, we can figure out the distance between any two points. Now the way we denote length between any two points, so to begin with we will put points on here. We'll call this point A, and over here we have point B, is we simply write AB. Now the distance between these points is equal to the magnitude or absolute value of A minus B. So take the two points, subtract their coordinate locations, and take the absolute value of that, and you have the distance of that line segment or the distance between those two points. So in this case, we have A is at point 3, or is at the coordinate 3, and B is at coordinate 7. <clears throat> so AB is going to be the absolute value of 3 minus 7 which equals the absolute value of negative 4. Now reminder, absolute value means distance from 0. So negative 4 is 4 units away. The length of line segment AB is 4. So again, a postulate, a statement that should be blaringly obvious. We are going to be working here. It's just the distance between points. Now as we move through and work past postulate 1, 5, we start to come up with other things that go along with it. So let's go and talk about postulate 1. 1, 6 is called the segment addition postulate. So if points A, B, and C are collinear, so we have three, we have a single line here, and we have A, B, and C in such a way that B is between A and C, then the section AB plus the section BC is equal to the entire length AC. And we can build this up as we go in order to work through finding individual pieces, such as in line segment CR, shown here, CA has a length of 2x. AR has a length of 5x plus 3. And we know that the entire distance, CR, is 31 feet. So how long is each section of this line segment? Well, we can solve this by setting up an equation. So I have 2x, or more specifically, let's take it general, CA plus AR has to equal CR. CA, we're told, is 2x. AR is 5x plus 3. And we're going to be adding these together to give us a total length of 31 feet. Now, solve for x. Combining like terms, we come out with uh, sorry, 7x plus 3 equals 31. Subtract 3 from each side. 7x equals 28. Dividing by 7 gives us x is equal to 4. So if x equals 4, then 2x is 8. 5x plus 3 is 5 times 4, which is 20 plus 3, so 23. And we have the lengths of the individual points, or individual segments. So add pieces together to get the length of the overall unit. We also have a new concept that we're coming up with in geometry 
that reaches just one step beyond something we have a parallel for. The concept is called congruence. Now, in algebra, or in other mathematical notation, if x equals 5 and y equals 4 plus 1, then we can say that x is equal to y. Both of them have the same value. In geometry, for things to be equal, they have to be completely identical, including their location. So when things have same magnitude, same size, we have a different word for this, and that word is congruence. So congruence simply means that two items are of the same size, but they're found in different locations. The way we note this, if length of AB is equal to the length of BC, so we have two line segments that are the same length, then we would say that line segment AB and line segment BC are congruent to each other. And that is denoted with this symbol, an equal sign with a tilde on top of it. That reads line segment AB is congruent to line segment BC. It's equal in all ways except perhaps its location. Also, another term that we're going to have here is bisector. A bisector is something that cuts another item in half. So, in the diagram shown on the page here, we have line segment DG with a line passing through it, M, at point O. So we have DG, line passing through it called M. Lines are typically denoted with a lowercase cursive or script type writing. And the point of intersection is O. Line M is a bisector of line segment DG. Given that, we need to notate this somehow on here. When items are congruent, markings are placed on the diagrams to show this. With lines and line segments, typical marking is a simple hash mark. Anything you see with this one hash mark that's in that same problem, it denotes that it is an item of the same size, or of congruent length. So, in this case, because M bisects DG, the two parts are equal to each other. Now, so, D... G, uh, o, line segment, is congruent to O, G, line segment, which means that D, O, is equal to O, G. Taking that idea and using it with the expressions that are given, we have 2x plus 5 is equal to 3x minus 1. Solving this equation, I'm going to begin by subtracting 2x from each side. So 5 is equal to x minus 1. Add 1. 6 is equal to x. So if 6 is equal to x, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 5 is 17. 3 times 6 is 18, minus 1 is also 17. So each section of this line segment is 17 units long. The entire thing is 34. So measurement of line segments, a couple of new postulates added in here in terminology, congruent. Make sure you understand these concepts and are ready to use them moving forward.